flow forecasting. Have you ever needed to buy something and realise that you were short of money? Were you able to borrow the money from a relative or a friend and pay it back later? This is known as a cash flow problem. In business, when you borrow, you have to pay back with interest. Cash flow forecasting is concerned with predicting the money coming in, which are cash inflows, and the money going out, cash outflows. We want to know how much and when. We want to know how much money will be left in the bank at the end of the, each month. If it's positive, we can pay our bills. If it's negative, we can't. Adding the cash inflows and subtracting the cash outflows will give you a net cash flow. Add this to the money you had in the bank to begin with, and that will give you your cash balance at the end. So in other words, Opening cash balance plus cash inflows minus cash outflows will give you your closing cash balance. Typically, this is done monthly. Typical cash inflows will be payment from customers for goods, your sales, any bank loan you might receive, rent from properties that you own, so money coming in from rent, and any capital investment that's coming in. Cash outflows include salaries, consumables, electricity, telephone, gas, rent out, materials, insurance, interest that you pay on your loan when you're paying it back, and dividends that you pay out to shareholders if you make a profit. There can be occasions when you have made a huge sale, but you are waiting for the money. So on paper, you've made a profit, but in reality, you could be short of cash until the money comes in. And in the meantime, you still have bills to pay and you could go overdrawn. So you'd have negative money in the bank and you'll have to pay interest charges on that overdraft. A cash flow crisis is when you don't have the cash to pay your bills, even though there might be people that owe you money that have to pay you money yet. Look at the following situations. Could there be a cash flow crisis? Running a shop where the suppliers offer a month's credit and the customers pay in cash. This is a really good position to be for you to be in because the incoming money is coming in straight away, but you have a month to pay your bills. A business that does very large projects. Now, often payment is made when the project is complete. In the meantime, you have to pay weekly wages monthly salaries and all your bills. There is a great danger of a cash flow crisis here. A factory which supplies other businesses on credit. You have to chase up payments to avoid a cash flow crisis here. A seaside hotel. You receive money in season, normally in the summertime, but in the winter months you're likely to see a huge drop in income. So you need to make sure that the summer income covers the winter outgoings to avoid a cash flow crisis. A nursery selling red and green peppers. As with the hotel, this is seasonal work where you're going to be very, very busy in the summer. In the winter, your costs are going to be very low because you are employing seasonal staff who will then go when the season is over. How can cash flow forecasts help you? Well, you will have an idea of when the money is going to come in and when the money is going to go out. And with this in mind, you can chase up a payment if you think there may be a cash flow problem coming up. You could take out a loan, if you, again, if you think there's going to be a lack of cash at some point. And a long-term problem 
is much more easy to predict. What are the risks of not doing a cash flow forecast? Well, your revenue, your income could arrive late. You could have a very angry supplier if you don't pay them on time. You could be paying interest on a loan or an overdraft that you didn't have to. And it could even be that you can't pay your bills and you could even have to cease trading altogether. The most important figure for a cash flow forecast is the closing bank balance. If the figure is small and positive, it means we can pay our bills. We're OK. If the figure is large and positive, then we have money that we could perhaps invest. We could expand the business. We could buy more products. We could buy better equipment. If the figure is small and negative, then we may have to borrow some money for a short time just to pay our bills. If the figure is large and negative, we have to take drastic action because we've got to get our inflows in or and or get our outflows down. Measuring success. In the early days when you're starting out, then the first thing to do is to try and break even. And to have a healthy cash flow. So money coming in exceeds the money going out. As you grow, then hopefully you'll make a profit. And that profit figure is probably the most important figure you can have. But also the balance sheet. It shows the value of your, of your business, you know, in terms of uh, how much money you have. Uh, do you have buildings, vehicles, equipment? What is the value of your company? Profit and loss account. The first figure you will see is called your sales, also called revenue, also called turnover. The next figure is the cost of goods sold. And the difference between the two is called your gross profit. So gross profit is sales minus cost of goods sold. So, for example, it costs you £10 to make a teddy bear and you're selling them for £15. So for, so for each bear, you make £5. If you sell a 1000 you make a gross profit of £5,000. If your gross profit is low or even negative, then one thing we can do is to increase our prices. Another thing we can do is to try to reduce the cost of sales. So you might better negotiate with your supplier or change supplier altogether or use cheaper materials. You then have to calculate your net profit before tax. So this is gross profit minus all the other expenses such as heating, lighting, water, sal uh, salaries, wages, telephone, petrol etc so net profit is gross profit minus expenses so going back to the, the example of the teddy bear we had a gross profit of, of five thousand pounds and let's say heating is 50 lighting is 40 water is 30 salaries a thousand telephone 20 petrol 200 so all these figures you take off the five thousand and that will give you a net profit before tax of 3,660. If net profit is low or negative, in other, words, in other words, we've made a loss, then we can do all the things that we thought about for gross profit. Or we can try and make savings on our expenses to try and bring down some of our bills or reduce our salaries, etc. A typical profit loss account is on the next slide. As you can see, we've made sales of £50,000. The cost of goods sold was 15000 giving a gross profit of £35,000. You then take away all those expenses of overheads that you can see, uh, and that gives you a net profit before tax of £21,500. Balance sheet. A profit and loss account shows what the business has done. A balance sheet shows what the business has. So let's look at some definitions. Asset. These are things that we own. There are fixed assets 
and there are current assets. Fixed assets are things which are here to stay. Buildings, vehicles, furniture, equipment, computers, etc. Current assets are changing all the time, such as your, your stock, debtors and your cash. Liabilities are things that we owe, so including loans and money owed to suppliers. The debtors figure is money that is owed to us. Creditors, money that we owe to other people. A shareholder is an owner of a business. And share capital is money invested by the shareholders or the owners. Working capital or net current assets is the amount of money available to run a business every day. So it's a very important figure. It shows whether we can pay our debts or not. Here's a typical balance sheet. So you start with your fixed assets. So in this case, you've got van and building. You then have current assets, stock, debtors, cash in bank, sometimes cash in hand. And if you add them all up together, you've got total assets of £106,000. You then have your liabilities. In this case, you've got creditors, loan, and there's an overdraft. And that comes to £10,000. Now, you've got £17,000 of current assets. And you've got £10,000 of current liabilities. That gives you a working capital figure of 17,000 minus 10,000, which is 7,000 pounds working capital, what you have to work with. All of your assets minus all of your liabilities comes to 96,000 pounds. Now, a balance sheet has to balance. So on the, on the other side, this has been financed by shareholders funds who, who've invested 80,000 pounds and you've got £16,000 profit from last year. And if you add those together, that, that also comes to £96,000. A balance sheet must always, always, always balance. To increase profits, you can increase your revenue. You can reduce your expenditure or both. So how do you increase revenue? Well, you have to sell more products. So you can look at your pricing strategy you can increase your range of products. Getting down the expenditure, you can negotiate a better price for your materials, choo use cheaper materials, you could lay people off if you had to, very sadly. You could move to cheaper premises, etc, etc, etc. If we are still owed a lot of money by people, we can chase up payments and if necessary, take legal action. Guys, thank you for listening. Please could you subscribe and like as it helps us to produce more and better videos like this in the future. Also, could you comment below what type of information you would like in the future as a guideline for us. Thank you again, guys, and see you all again soon.